It is so good to see you all this morning. I cannot believe that summer is moving fastly, but we are still here and present to experience and witness it. Today, the sermonic theme is model living. Model living. So last Sunday, I got to watch the closing Olympics. You know, I felt like if I watched the opening of the Olympics, I should kind of try to watch the ending of the Olympics. And I'll be honest with you all, I'm not the greatest patriotic person. I don't have a lot of, you know, got to put up the red, white, and blue flag kind of thing. That's just not my, my, my feel. But something kind of came out of me watching the Olympics. And if ever before I felt patriotism, I did feel it during the Olympics. I was impressed with all the commitment of the athletes and how they rise from the masses and looking at people so good that it put in hours of training to come to this space and to compete against each other. I thought the team spirit was just excellent. It was beautiful. It was nice to see some people win. And I even enjoyed seeing other countries win, occasionally here and there. But I still return to the fact that I really felt proud that we had the most gold medals and I felt proud of the United States of America. Based on the alphabetical system of the Japanese system, we were close to the end. It's not hard to figure out that you, United States, would be at the end. But we were there, invisibly so. And so I was waiting, even in the closing ceremony toward the end, for the U.S. delegation to walk in. Team USA. But there was one person that wasn't there this year. This woman rose to fame in 2019, when as a freshman at Louisiana State University, she broke the 100-meter record at the NCAA outdoor national championship. This sister was at the top of the Olympic list for women sprinters. She's a Dallas native who shot to worldwide fame this past June of this year with her stunning victory in the 100 meter race at the Olympic tryouts. She also charmed many of us because after winning, she ran up in the bleachers in the stadium to give her grandmother a big hug. She said, without my grandmother, there would be no Shakari Richardson. So my family, you see, is everything, my everything until the day I'm done. It meant everything to her to have the one who raised her to be able to witness in that moment her breaking a record at the Olympic tryouts. She has already made history as the sixth fastest woman in the world. But Shakari did not get to go to the Olympics because marijuana was found in her system. She was suspended for 30 days, and 30 days seemed to be enough time to miss the Olympics. But many of her fans said, that's OK. We still support her anyway. We know what it is to make a mistake. And so they stood beside her. I want to talk this morning about role models. I'm always curious as to how people pick certain people to look up to, especially young people when they tell me who their role models are. But it really is an individual choice. I think it just happens organically. Certain people grab our attention and we begin to see qualities in them that inspire us. We see an example of what and who we can be. Talk to many celebrity status folks and they will always say, wow, when I was a kid, these persons were my role models. These are the people that inspired me, that inspired me. These are my sheroes, and these are my heroes. In the text today, and for much of Ephesians, the authors are reminding us of how to live our lives. The author was big on conduct, how we appear, how we carry ourselves in the public. Last week, we looked at the do's and don'ts of our community living, our new identity, and how to get along. And some of you added a few more wise tips for getting along with each other. And today it continues with some admonishment to be careful of how we live our lives. Be careful. Be careful of how you appear. Be wise. Don't be foolish. Be filled with God's spirit. Sing psalms and hymns. Give thanks. Be grateful. We are supposedly models and we can turn folks toward God. But guess what? We can turn folks all the way off. And it appears that we might, we might be more successful at one than the other these days. I'm just going to leave that right there. Have you ever been to Ikea? Beside it being a warehouse of affordable housing items, it is a store of possibility. 
You walk into Ikea and room after room, they are totally made up of items that you can buy from Ikea. In fact, you can have your house look just like this if you buy all these things in this room and set them up in your house. You can have a room. You don't need no designer, interior designer to come in and charge you some absorbent fee. Just buy these items in this room and your room can look like this. You don't have to go to any other store. It's a one-stop store with ready-to-assemble furniture, showroom after showroom, taking all of the guesswork out of designing and color coordination, a nice contemporary look. IKEA is the world's largest furniture retailer. They have 378 IKEA stores operating in 30 countries. Top country, Germany. Guess who's in second place? America. IKEA shows us what our home could look like. On tours in new apartment buildings, often they will have what they call a model apartment. And that model apartment will wow you because you will go into potentially an apartment that you're thinking about renting and you will be like, wow, it could look like this. It doesn't look like that, but it could look like this. This is what your space could look like. They model for us. We have, as Christians, the wonderful opportunity before us to model for others what their life could look like if they had a little bit of faith in it. We get to model and sometimes other models for us a life lived in faith. When I am weak, you are strong, and when you are strong, I might be weak. But we get to model for others what it means to be a follower of Christ. The text calls us to choose wise living over foolish living. We're always stepping into this new identity that we have in Christ Jesus. As our former self, we indulge in excessive abuse, the text says, of alcohol. We know what overconsumption does. It leads us down this slippery slope. But we are always tempted to turn to things that consume us instead of being consumed by God's spirit. It's so easy to turn to Amazon with the one click. Come on now, somebody. It's easy to be consumed by gambling. It's easy to be consumed by our anxieties and our worries and allow it to lead us. It's easy to turn on the TV and binge watch for a whole weekend. There's a lot to be scared about these days, and it's easy to turn to excessive murmuring and complaining and picking up the phone to talk about it instead of pray about it. It's so much harder to turn to the Holy Spirit, to lean into God. When I was growing up in the church, we would sing all the time, what a fellowship. And the refrain would be leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. And I was like, really? Are his arms really everlasting? Safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning. The refrain would keep going on about this leaning on Jesus. What a blessedness. What a peace of mind. What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. As a young adult, I thought, wow, that's a lot of leaning. But where are we leaning today? And are we really leaning on Jesus, leaning on God, leaning on our faith? It takes real intentionality to lean this way instead of that way. It's like that defective grocery cart. You know, it always wants to go one way, and you want it to go the other way. That's what it means to lean into our faith, to lean into the Holy Spirit, to lean toward God, that we have to do it with intentionality. Part of being models is that we are always doing the work of leaning towards Jesus, even when we want to lean the other way. We are always doing the work of leaning towards God, leaning towards the Holy Spirit, choosing what the text says, wise living over foolish living. This week I turned on the television with my son. I hadn't watched the news in a while and I thought maybe something had happened. I needed to know and I wanted to know just a little bit more about what was happening with the Delta variant. And as I turned the TV on and I looked, me and my son began to watch parents 
parents arguing. Parents arguing over whether their kids should wear the mask to school or whether they shouldn't. And I looked down, and this seemed to be happening in a lot of southern schools, these parents with posters arguing with one another for their side. It wasn't just a disagreement, but folks were raising their signs and demonstrating visibly hostility toward one another. One parent even threatened the elected official, if you vote a certain way, we will come for you. I was actually thrown aback. Our country is so divided, it's so torn, and the tear just keeps seemingly getting bigger and bigger. We perceive each other as threats to our well-being, and maybe there is a space for the church to model a different way of being where humanity is first, where humanity is the ace card, where humanity trumps everything. Let's speak to the concerns and fears that people have. Let's present medical data, not your opinion. Let's talk about how we move forward even when we disagree. Let's move forward. How do we save as many lives as possible should always be at the front of our discussion. And how can we as the body of Christ model a different path, or do we just look like the world? Jesus was always modeling for us a different way. He took the moment before him and used it as a teaching moment. Oh, you're not supposed to heal on Sunday, but what about this life that's been sick? He always used the moment as a teachable moment, and at the forefront of his operation was people. Start with love. Be wise. We are God's hands and feet. We are God's face. We are God's spirit. We are God's grace. We are God's mercy. We are God's ambassador. We are God's Olympic team. We are the spirit of God on earth, and we model for others how to live with some degree of concern and empathy for others and for the planet and for justice for all. And it may be only a few or a lot because one lost sheep meant a lot to Jesus, but someone is watching you. Somebody is watching you, and you have the wonderful opportunity to model what it means to live a life of faith. And sure, we make mistakes, but even in those moments, we can model how to get through a tough situation. Many moons ago, I went to a Christian conference. It was big. It was in Atlanta, Georgia, and there were over 5,000 people in attendance, and we met nightly in this auditorium, and it was a big space in a hotel. And imagine lots and lots of seats put down. Now, I have observed about people that when people come into a space, some people like to sit in the back. Some people like to sit in the middle. And some people like to sit at the front. There's all kind of theories about where you all are sitting in service, and that's a, another day. But I happen to be one of those people that like to sit right up in the front, right where Stephanie and Paul, and I, I like to sit right up in the front because I don't want no distractions when I'm coming to hear something. And so there were so many people at this conference, and my friends, I was like, I'll see you later because they didn't want to sit in the front. So I thought one person looking for a seat in the front. So every night I would look for a seat. And on this night, I found a seat on the second row. I was so excited about this seat on the second row. I had my paraphernalia bag and all my stuff. And I had my Bible. And I plopped it on the seat. And I was sitting there. And then it occurred to me, because it was going to be a long service, no hour service like us, more like three hours, I got to go to the bathroom, put my stuff in the seat, went to the bathroom, came back, guess what happened? Some other person attending the conference took my stuff off my seat on the second row where 5,000 people were attending and put it on the floor. I tried to tell the lady nicely that was, that was my stuff. I tried to tell that person really nicely that that was my seat. I couldn't believe it. She flipped me off and like, <laughs> she's not moving and nobody did anything. And so where did I end up that evening? All the way in the back. I was so fuming. So the next day comes and I run across this lady and this lady says to me, I saw what happened. I saw how you handled that situation. 
She said, and I was impressed. And I thought to myself, I was in a sea of strangers, didn't think anybody was looking. Somebody is always watching us. That's why when people say, oh, I saw you at Target, I'm like, what was I doing? <laughs> was I being a model or was I doing something different? So last week when Sunia said she saw me, I was like, okay, what did you see me doing? <laughs> Because someone is always watching. And we may not mean the world to thousands and thousands of people, but you mean the world to somebody. Somebody is always watching you, and it may be someone that doesn't even know you. Whether a person knows us or not, we always have the opportunity to model our faith in what it really looks like to be a follower of Christ. I don't know how to convey that because I think we have an awesome opportunity in our world today to model something that looks so beautiful and so different where people are considered special. We have before us this opportunity to model grace and mercy and love and what it looks like on the ground. The text today says, be careful how you live. Be careful how you live. Be careful how you live. Amen. So today, I'd like to deposit this question into your spirit. Who were your role models? Who are your role models? Why? What qualities did you witness in these people? Let us pray. Dear Lord, no human is an island unto themselves, which I believe means, Lord, that you deposited lots of good things in our lives to get us to where we are today. And you put models and mentors that help to show us the way, that help to guide us, and to help us be where we are today. And so in this moment, we just say thank you. Thank you for the models you gave to us. Thank you for the mentors that you put along our way. Thank you for the model and mentor you are making us, even though we don't know it. And we welcome and we embrace this opportunity to be followers of Christ in our world. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>